All right, guys, welcome back to the Totally Worth It podcast, episode number 12. I'm your host, Kendall. And I'm Haley. And we are both your hosts. Yeah. For episode number 12. We're always the host. We're always the host. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How are you, dear? I'm good. You good? Yeah. Um, we have officially made it a week at least with the puppy. Yeah, it's uh, like from last going week. into week three. Week three? Yeah. We've had him for two weeks. Have we? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think. I didn't know that. I don't, know. I don't think so. We did the podcast last week, and that was like night number two or three, I think. No, it wasn't. Really? We had already had him. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't know. Time flies when you're having fun, or either you're just busy. Yeah. That's what more what I feel like it is. Um, so how have you been? Um, good, I guess. Good? Yeah. Yeah? I'm just, What's I'm, new with you? Uh, I don't know. I'm just busy all the time and... Busy all the time? Tired and... <laughs> I don't know. Busy all the time and tired. Yeah. Well, it sounds like adulthood. Yeah. I've had some, like, dizzy spells this week. Yeah? Yeah. That's not so, good. I'm trying to figure that out tomorrow. Yeah, she's going to the doctor tomorrow to uh, see if we can uh, pinpoint whatever that is that's going on yeah. with her. But she's. I wonder if it's what's making me so tired. I don't know because you've been before we recorded this podcast. We sat down to watch an episode of a TV show, and she made it maybe a quarter five a quarter <laughs> of the way into it, and I heard her on the couch asleep. Yeah, and I didn't even mess with her. I just finished the episode by myself. Yeah. And then she tried to... Then you scared me so bad when you woke me up. Like, I was so disoriented, had no idea where I was at. Like, <laughs> I was in a different universe. I mean, I tried to be as gentle as possible. I know, but it just, like, startled me. Yeah. There's, there's no easy way to wake you up. Yeah, there's not. I hate being woke up. <laughs> um, and then she tried to play that, 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 uh, that card of... I tried my best to stay awake. I really I did. I really, did. I Listen, really she's do yawning. like that she's yawning. she's yawning right now. Leave me alone. I don't know. She's uh, I tried my best to stay awake. With it says the girl that pulled that laid down flat on her <laughs> back on the couch, pulled a blanket up to her neck. You know, I can't sit up and watch TV. <laughs> I have to lay down. Girls do that though. They were like, I'm trying. I tried so hard, and they're like feet propped up, a laid down, cut blanket up to their neck. Hair, you know, just yeah. full nice pillow. If y'all like, hear whimpering, it's because Bean is at the door. Yeah, our our puppy, he's at the door. We tried to have him in here walking around. Uh, Joe is actually not here tonight, so we can kind of be a little bit louder than we normally are. Yeah. But the dog's kind of whimpering in the background at the door. Yeah. And we don't know how to solve that issue right now, so um, I'm just kind of stuck with that tonight. But, um, yeah, so Haley's been tired. Yeah. Um, we've all been kind of busy. Um, it's been, it's been a very interesting week. Yeah. Has it not? Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> been that. Um, some, uh, well, how would you categorize it? I mean, some, some changes, some changes have been made this past week. Yeah. Um, mainly for you, mainly but... for me. Um, but some changes have been made this past week and. Uh, we were talking about what to do with with this week's episode of the podcast, and I kind of said, "Why don't we just why don't I just talk about that?" Yeah, like what um, we've been dealing with and going yeah. through. And uh, it's it's been a uh, interesting week. And I think it'll really help somebody. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> if not, it's... I mean, there's somebody in your shoes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I've had some stuff going on this. Uh, well, a lot longer than this past week, but uh, specifically, it, specifically this, week. <laughs> this past week, and it all kind of culminated. And um, so I'm just going to talk about uh, this. So I'll kind of start at the beginning. Okay. Um, and this is kind of the way that I explained it. I went to actually the other night, Friday night, I went to eat with my one of my best friends, Nick. Um, we went to a Korean barbecue place 
uh, the Korean barbecue place that we were going to go to was... we got, The one that we already talked about on here. Yeah, that we, that we already like. talked about. The girls didn't go. They went and did their own thing, chilies or whatever it was. And then me and him went to do the Korean barbecue thing again because we loved it. Um, and so we went all the way down to Charlotte, which is like an hour and 10 minutes from where we are at least, probably closer to an hour and 20 minutes. Oh. Um, and the place was closed. And it was during their normal business hours, so we walked up to the door, and it looked like there's tables scattered everywhere, like, moved out of the way, and there's, like, caution tape up. And we were like, what the heck is going on? Well, they were renovating or something. Um, But it said they were open online, so we were like, what the heck? And uh, anyway, we got to looking up. We were like, well, this place clearly is not going to serve us Korean barbecue tonight, so we got to find something else. So we went on our phones and found another Korean barbecue place like 20 minutes in still in the further direction. Um, so roughly we went about an hour and 40 minutes away to go eat Korean barbecue. Um, and we got to this place and they told us that the other place we were at had caught fire and burned. Mm. Um, and so they were doing, I guess, renovating or trying to get it back That's up. That's crazy. And we were just there like a month or two. Yeah. But it was so good. Oh, my gosh. I'm so, it was so glad good. that you had the best time. It was so good. That was the first time ever in my life that I have tried Wagyu beef. No. No, 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 tried... no, 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 no. Like a, like, a, like a, a real high-grade Wagyu beef. Oh. It was intense. It was very uh, exciting. Yeah. I don't even like thinking about it. <laughs> just... Yeah. I don't know. I don't either, to be honest with you. I just know I ate a bunch okay, of stuff. Okay, so so why Any, did y'all go? So we went, <laughs> we went as a celebratory dinner because I quit, or I am quitting. No, you did. No, I quit. Yeah, but I'm just saying. I, I feel like I haven't because it's only been a few days. Um, but. I'm quitting smoking. Vaping. And when I say smoking, I mean vaping. I used to be a smoker way back. And then he met me. Then I met Haley, and she said, you can smoke if you want to, but I'm but not. But I, I, I don't really date people that smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so that meant that I had to do something with that. And, so I, but I'll, I'm still proud of you like looking back on that, because pretty much from that moment... Now, there were times after you like dropped me off at home that I'm sure you chain smoked all the way. Oh, my gosh. But all the way back. But not very long. But not very long after that, you pretty much like cold turkey just quit it and completely switched to vaping. I got a buddy that I work with. Um, When when, if you walked up and seen someone in public smoking a cigarette, Mm -hmm. what would you say that they're doing? How would you say it? They're smoking. Okay. Right? They're smoking yeah. a what? Cigarette. Hey, that guy's smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Well, I've got a buddy who is not from California, but he says it in a very California way. He says that you are, like, if you were smoking a cigarette on the corner, he'd be like, hey, look at that lady. She's ripping cigs. Ripping cigs. Ripping cigs. I do and not I think like that. Fun, I know it's so uncomfortable to say. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that at all. Uh, ripping cigs. But anyway, anyway, so you have stopped vaping yeah and nick had also he stopped smoking. he stopped smoking like a month ago uh it's something that i've been struggling with for a really 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 long time yeah um and sorry the dog's clawing on the door <laughs> <laughs> do you think i should well i can't go put him in the crate no he will bark for sure bark um Jeez, he's like in beat the Why don't door you down. let him sit on your lap? No, he's going to chew on everything. Okay, we're back. I had to put the dog out. Sorry. Uh, he's in a fenced-in area in the yard for a little while. Um. Anyway, so the vaping is something, yeah. is something I've been struggling with for a very, very, very long time. Which I didn't know because you've pretty much always said, like, I'm never going to quit because I don't want to. I yeah. enjoy it and... That's what it is. Yeah. And I, and and I was I, just like, okay. I still feel that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, the Lord that. had other plans. Apparently yeah, he did. He did. Um, so yeah, I, I quit vape. I quit smoking cigarettes when me and you met and then I started vaping, um, to kind of curb that. 
And then I got hooked on vaping, and I was vaping for up until recently. Yeah. Um, and it just got really bad. Um, I to just, think of. I like, ever since like this has happened, I do um, like sympathize or empathize with you because like there was like such a little brief period, like maybe a year where like I tried to vape and stuff and I did get like used to it. I tried to vape. I mean, I've tried different things and I did it for like a year. And then, um, it's, I mean, clearly as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I didn't, but, and then I haven't done it since, but I remember those first like couple of days, like, especially in the car, it's always in your hand. Yeah. Then it's like, what am I, what do you do? Yeah. Like, what do you do with your hands? <laughs> I know. And then it's like, because going, it tastes good. It's not like a cigarette. Yeah. It doesn't taste bad. There's I'm, actual I mean, flavor. Yeah. So to I, people that smoke cigarettes, cigarettes taste good. Well, yeah, but that's nasty. <laughs> that's, it, no. that's really gross. <laughs> but I do, I really do feel for you because I, yeah. Yeah. So. And, it, and like you said, I it, can't it, imagine how much worse it is for you because you've been smoking something since you were like, what, 14, 16, 15, 15? 16 ish. Yeah. Um, and when I was younger, it was 18. I mean, they just yeah. recently did that a, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, you could buy them at 18. So I just kind of like snuck and s- stole them from yeah. people and got them from friends and stuff until I was 18. And then it was over with. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, I, I smoked for a long time and, and the vaping, it, it wasn't something that I wanted to give up or get rid of. It was something I enjoyed and I felt like I, I needed it to like stay sane, to stay sane. Um, and I feel like that's such a cop out cause I'm like, how the heck you think I stay sane? I don't know how you stay sane. I have no idea. I'm tired all the time. Yeah, but I have no idea how you stay sane. Um, and it was just something that I didn't, I didn't think ever think twice about. Like yeah. I just didn't, and I knew it was something and I know this sounds bad, but I felt as if you were like at peace with it. <laughs> I went, I wasn't, it was more <laughs> like I just accepted it and I, there was no point in me beating a dead horse. Yeah. And yeah. I was just honestly going to wait until Joe hit that age that I was with my parents when I was just like. If you love me, you'll just quit because it's bad for you and you're going to have cancer and die. And I think my mindset a little bit was that I know that that day is coming. Um, But anyway, I I had not planned at all on quitting. And so this week was very, very unexpected. Um, And then I'll rewind a a tad bit. So I've got a friend that I work with. His name is Zach. Um, I did check with him prior to this uh, to see if it was okay if I use his name. Um, I've worked with Zach for probably, it's been a while. It's been like three years. Yeah. It's probably three years or so. Um, and in our field of work, it's very easy to have a bad mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, super easy. And I don't think Zach would be uh, ashamed of me saying that he, along with me, had a very bad mouth. Mm -hmm. And even now, sometimes I still do. Um, And I'm trying to work on that too. Um, But Zach was, he worked with us for a while, then he went to a different shift. And then now he came back to the shift that that I'm on, that I supervise. Um, And I, I knew Zach back then, the person that he was then, um, and it's very much different from the person that he is now. Like it was very evident. It was very, it was very evident that there was some type of change in yeah. Zach's life. Um, now I didn't at the time, this is probably three months ago, maybe. Yeah. Or so. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's been a couple months, um, that I noticed this and said something to him. Um, and so anyway, I, I approached him and I was like, Hey, what is, what's wrong with what's, you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? What, what, why, are you why, like are, this? why are you different? Why are you, why are you so different from the Zach that I knew? Yeah. Um, because it was, 
it wasn't as if he was like a terrible person and now he's walking on water. Yeah. He just it was cleaned just cleaned himself up. It a was bit. just that he, I could visibly see that he had cleaned some things up in his life. Yeah. And I knew that he had dealt with uh some and I don't I'm not going to get too into detail about the things that he shared with me, but I knew that he had dealt with some stuff with alcohol and um just some his relationship with God was nowhere close to where he knew that it should have been right. and uh, his mouth was not clean. Um, and just minor things in life that a lot of people don't really worry or care about. And so anyway, I, I had gotten to talking to Zach about what had happened or what, what it was. And he told me that he actually started listening to a podcast. Um, the podcast was, I think, I think it's called the unashamed podcast. Mm -hmm. It's with Phil Robertson from Duck yeah. dynasty. It's like him and his son, they have a podcast and they've been doing it for a long time. Um, but Zach just kind of got on it. Um, and I guess that the, and it's a very Christian podcast, very evangelical. It's very um, men. Catered. Yeah. Very men oriented. Um, and so anyway, Zach began telling me that. Just the things that they talked about on the podcast um, that were revolved that revolved around God and um, spirituality, it kind of pushed him in a direction to. I, I mean, I I think it would be fair to say that he was, you know, convicted a, yeah. a little bit about some things in his life and decided, hey, maybe this is God telling me that I need to clean some stuff up. Yeah, and so he did that, and, and it's been evident. It's been very very evident. But it's not like he walks around at work with a sign saying, hey, you know, God changed my life and you, yeah. you need to get on board. Yeah. It's, it's just something that you can notice in him yeah. that and makes and you it, question. And it's very difficult not to notice. Yeah. And, uh, it's infectious. It's infectious. Yeah. And and it's weird because I'm the supervisor, so it's it's almost a weird kind of, um, what, you would, what would you say, uh, it's a weird kind of scenario because yeah. it's almost like your your ball. I mean, like I'm not, you're I'm looking not, up I'm not, to him. I'm not really his boss, kind of. but kind of. I mean, I'm his boss in someone else's yeah. stead. <laughs> um, but it's 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 sort of like your if your boss comes to you and says, "Hey, how do you do your job? Teach me how yeah. to do your job." You know, it's just kind of a weird yeah. dynamic. Um, but I didn't really necessarily care um, because I wanted to know what was going on with him. And he was telling me all of that. And he, you know, he didn't even really have to tell me. I could see it. Yeah. Um, but it definitely explained it better. Well, and I think him kind of sharing his testimony, it explained things yeah. in depth and in detail. And it yeah. really made you. And just to pause on that topic for a second and go back. Like I, I grew up in, I mean, you could, I just about was born in the lobby of the church. <laughs> I mean, I was there yeah. every single time the doors were open. My parents served in the church. My dad and all of them still do. And it's just, we were very church oriented. Yeah, same. And I got saved at a young age. And as everybody knows, when you get older, especially as a man, I mean, I don't know as a woman, it may be, but I'm just not a woman, so I can't speak from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, as a man, it's so easy to just get into your life routine mm. and get the, your family, your job, and your home and just circle through those yeah. three things. And it's so easy to let the things that you used to be passionate about kind of sit on the back burner because yeah. you're so busy yeah. working these three things that it's it's just difficult to somewhat maintain it and... I, I grew up in a in a in an atmosphere where everyone was on cloud nine mm -hmm. spiritually. Everybody was, you know, just you know, God is so great. He's speaking to me. He's doing this. He's doing that. And I just, as I got older, I I got my interest. It was in other things, and so I sort of felt like I wasn't experiencing that the way that everyone else seemed to be. Right. Um, they were, you know, people were saying things along the lines of, you know, the God's doing so many crazy things in my life right now. You would just never believe it and this and this. And I secretly, I was like kind of annoyed by that mm -hmm. because I wasn't experiencing that. Um, and even, even after, you know, we, one of the things that I experienced as a, I used to lead worship a lot. 
um, at church when I worked at a church previously, when I, right after I graduated college. And one of the things that really struck me is that everybody was just so from the st- from the front of the stage back, as far as towards the back of the stage, everybody that was on that side was so in my world. Mm-hmm. And everybody from the front of the stage to the back of the auditorium was in a completely different world. Yeah. Like all we cared about was making sure the songs were perfect and making sure that we did this and say the Putting prayer right show. and this and this and this. And those are all, those were all great things. Yeah. But, but the it's crowd, not the most but, important but, thing. But the crowd was full of doctors, plumbers, lawyers, cashiers, door door people. Yeah, I mean, carpenters, and none of those people care about any of that stuff. Right, and that's what really aggravated me a lot, and I think kind of pushed me away from being in that world. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, anyway, I kind of left that behind, and sort of went to a try to obtain a normal life. Yeah. Um, and I think again, it was because I felt like I wasn't necessarily experiencing God, how everyone else claimed yeah. to be experiencing God. It wasn't a walking on water scenario yeah. for me. Um, I felt more at peace and at home with people who did not work in the church, people who had a normal job and a normal life and a normal family. Mm-hmm. I just felt more well, in I tune with think those a, people. I also think a lot of times it's intimidating for young or younger people to hear like elders and, you know, older yeah. people that are seasoned in church and are yeah. like in their yeah. daily walk. And when you hear them say like, oh, well, you know, God spoke to me and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. in, in the younger generation's mind, it's like, well, I mean, he don't just be coming out of a cloud yelling at me like I don't hear yeah. him like that. And it, <laughs> and it doesn't always work yeah. like that. Yeah. And I think that's a struggle yeah. for um, like younger generations yeah. is God doesn't always, it's not like some big booming voice. Yeah. Sometimes it's a situation or a door that's opened or a door that's shut and you're like, okay, well, that was God. Yeah. And he doesn't have to physically speak. Yeah. And I think that older people make that very yeah. misleading. And it's, all, it's almost like I felt like I was, like God was in the house and I had opened the door, but there was still a screen door there. Yeah. And I could see him, I could hear him, but I wasn't there with him. It's like you didn't experience. I couldn't experience him the way that all of the people around me were saying that they were experiencing God. And I truly believe that I was born again. I just was like really, really struggling to figure out how yeah. I could get to where they were. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, long story short, life rolled on. And yeah. um, this whole time I was, you know, I was probably, during all of that, I was smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Um, and I had, like I said, I'd started at a young age and uh, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just was. It's something that you always have to have. And if you don't, you're you're done. You figure out a way to find it. Yeah. And so life kind of rolled on and, and things happened. And then you and I got together and we built a family. And I started vaping to try and quit smoking cigarettes. Um, and that ha- led on for... Four years, yeah, um, or so, almost five, almost, years. almost five years now. Um, and that's where this thing with Zach, yeah, kind of comes in. So, um, me and Zach have been having conversations for probably a you know a cup a, a month or two, a couple months or so, not very long at all, but just general conversations. I mean, we're not like on the steps of buildings at work, just praying together, you know, like yeah. we're just having conversations as, right. men, as men. And that's some of the most like liberating, freeing stuff because everybody that I know is so is their head is buried shoulder deep in the church world. And as soon as you bring up a problem, they want to just, let's just get together and pray over you and this and that. And I just want to have a conversation with yeah. another man yeah. about these things. And that was very, that's what the infectious part was for me that he wasn't, he wasn't trying to um, teach me anything. He wasn't trying to turn it into a lesson yeah, like, of let's some just talk kind. About it. Like I was, it was just one person who was curious about another person asking them questions. Yeah. 
And there was no, I'm smarter than you, you're smarter than him, blah, 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 none of that. And uh, that was really awesome, um, just to be able to have that conversation with another man. Um, and it wasn't something that was forced, it just kind of happened. And so we got to, these conversations kept rolling and nothing ever really struck me about it. I was, you know, I'm someone coming from a church world and we go to church. I mean, we're, we're a Christian family and I know these things, but I just still up to this point haven't really, and I mean, I don't want to say haven't felt real, yeah, but have felt pretty numb. Yeah. Um, and as a man of the family, especially in the church world, you're supposed to be the strongest one. Yeah. Um, or somewhat, but, uh, I think that would probably be backwards in our case. (laughs) I don't think so. Um, but anyway, it just got to the point where it was getting in my way of y'all. Yeah. And it's getting in my way of church getting my way of work, my way of home, everything that, that had to happen before anything else happened. Yeah. Well, it was, it was also getting to a point and I could see it, but I just like, I just felt like it wasn't my place. I was like, I don't want to push a button or whatever, (laughs) but you could see the, um, the, um, God, what is the word? Reliance. Maybe. Yeah. The dependency yeah. on it. And it was like, you had to have it. If you got in the car, you were going yeah. back in the house to get it. Yeah. If you can't find it, you're like turning the couch over. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you, like, you got to stop for juice. Doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter what we've juice, got to do. Coils, all of it. And, and it's it expensive. It's not yeah, cheap. It's not cheap. And, I mean, I could see that on you, and yeah. it was it was like such a big irritant for you, I feel like. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, I've just had this feeling, and I'd been praying about it, that it would like come to a head, but I didn't really know that you were struggling with it at that point. Yeah. But I do and feel like... And these conversations and stuff isn't really something I come home and talk to you yeah, about. Yeah, you didn't. So it's just something I kept like watching and seeing and I was just like, all right, God, just do your thing. Like, just get rid of it. This is so annoying. Um, so <laughs> And then and then the worst part is if I genuinely like if you're looking for for that, but I didn't know that that's what you're looking for. And if I ask, hey, well, what you looking for? I can help you. You were immediately pissed off. Like, don't even ask me. You already know what I'm looking for. That's not true. And I'm like, okay, That's I'm leaving. True. I'm not doing this. <laughs> but I think, um, like, without knowing that you were struggling with it and then me seeing this, yeah, and then it just, I don't know. I feel like it kind of came full circle because for the past however long since we've been, um, like, going – to Sunday school, all of Sunday school has been about spiritual gifts <laughs> and, you know, and then yeah. the preachers preach several times about like, you have to die to be like, what are you, what are you going to kill? So that way you can live. Yeah. And I don't know. I just felt like it, there was just a full circle moment coming. And then like, there was a lot of things that were, that were poking me and like pointing you that were poking <laughs> me and saying, Hey, you got, you got something. That, yeah, and, and to be able to see Zach clean some of those things up in his life, I felt like I didn't want to get left behind. Mm-hmm. Almost in mm-hmm. a way, like if some if you're following somebody and they're getting a little bit faster than you, yeah. you don't want to lose them. You want to speed up and yeah. stay with them. Um, in the same sense, like he, I felt like he was he was a lot further ahead than me, and I didn't want to I didn't want to let him leave me in the dust. Yeah, <laughs> because he looked. And I mean, he looks just like a happy yeah. person. He looks so much happier. Yeah. Um, and I know that he quit, he quit drinking and quit cussing and, and, and a mixture of things that he got rid of in his life that really made a change for him. And I just so desperately like wanted that. Mm-hmm. And it just really pissed me off that I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, we just been having these conversations and I never really told him that. Yeah, uh, but secretly in my mind, it was depressing me because I knew that that's where I wanted to be. 
And that's where you should and I, be. And I've let myself get <laughs> back backwards to go backwards. Um, and so anyway, um, we, me and him have been having conversations, like I said, and, uh, we've been talking about everything, I mean, music, movies, shows and things. And, and I come from a long history of the church world. So there's, <laughs> you know, TV shows, music, songs and stuff that I've been sharing with him since he's kind of getting back into it that yeah. he may not have heard and stuff that I know I just didn't care about. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he'll care about them. <laughs> Or help me care about them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we were talking um, a few days ago about, see, it was on Wednesday, um, that he had just recently watched The Passion of the Christ. Um, and we were talking about it. And that's a that's a very vivid movie. Yeah. Um, if you don't cry watching that, the, the, yeah, I don't. It's, it's rough. You might. It's very rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we were talking about it and he was just kind of talking to me about all the different things Jesus went through and in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, I know this. I already know this. It is rough, but yeah, my mind is kind of checking it off. I know this, I know this, I know this. Yeah. Um, because I've heard it a thousand, heard this a thousand times, you know, this story and I sort of kind of approaching it from like, um, a bit of a butt kind of way. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, which you can do that if it's something you already know you you do that yeah i have an issue with that um but i'm working on it um so anyway we were talking about it and i don't think he got that vibe from me but i felt like i was giving that vibe off um so anyway we were talking about that and so that was on my mind and then at work i ride around a lot um and so i was i don't know why this came about or came to be, but I had already kind of had this in my mind that I felt like got like some, I felt that like vaping, getting rid of vaping or quitting vaping was, was coming. I felt like it needed to come. What was that? The dog. Oh, well at least we know he's still alive. (laughs) Um, and I felt like it was coming. I just didn't necessarily know when. Um, but, I ride around a lot, and uh, so I was sitting in a parking lot in my my work vehicle, um, and I was scanning through YouTube, and this, uh, all of my YouTube recommended stuff is movie trailers, political interviews, politics stuff, and funny videos. Mm -hmm. None of it is music, really. None of it. So I don't know why this popped up. And obviously it was God. Um, And I had never heard it before, but it was a song. And I don't know how anybody out there who's listening feels about Hillsong. And I really don't care. Um, What is that noise? A truck going down the road. Oh, truck going down the road. But anyway, so this song popped up by Hillsong. And I had already had this stuff on my mind about the passion of the Christ, crucifixion, Jesus' death in general. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of down a little bit because I felt like something, I didn't know that it was God at the time, but I felt like something was saying like, you, you need to, you're, you're going to need to quit smoking soon. Um, because every second I just had to know where it was at and I was wanting it and I've been smoking it a lot more Yeah. recently uh, and it was just getting really bad. And this song popped up on my YouTube and it was called Blown Away, and it's by Hillsong United. Now, in the world that I grew up in, I was very into worship music. So the guy, I knew the guy when I seen him singing it <clears throat> before I even listened to it. His name is Matt Crocker. He's a singer for Hillsong. And I know, I know that I really like his voice because I grew up listening to him sing different worship songs. And so I was like, sure. I'll check it out. So I, I cut the video on. And in today's world, it's very difficult for a, one person with a guitar to walk up to a microphone and blow your mind. Yeah. Because we've seen it all. We've heard it all in 2024. It's just difficult. People yeah. need more to be more, to yeah, be you impressed. Yeah, have the drums and the piano. People and need more to be impressed now. Yeah. Um, and so he walks up to the microphone with a guitar 
and he just starts kind of finger picking and this song starts playing he starts playing this song and it's just him and the guitar and he starts singing this song that I've never heard before. And normally a song has, you know, verse, bridge, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, simple song layout. But he just starts basically de- depicting the death of Jesus through the song. And uh, it just kind of builds and builds and builds. And it's very graphic. And... It's not necessarily a song that you would like all sing together at church. It's yeah. just kind of like a, it's more of a performance song. Yeah, like it is to listen is. to, something for you to listen to. Um, and I had it cranked up in my car and I was sitting in a parking lot in the dark with my lights off. Um, and I was blacked out in a car. And as he was singing this, I'm going to read some of the lyrics to this song um, just so that the people who are listening can get an idea of what. Um, this song is about so the song is called blown away by hillsong united so i'm going to read read the lyrics to you it says oh troubled messiah you prayed through the night unbearable sorrow the world on your mind betrayed by the kiss of a friend you were taken by your own free will rejected and disowned by those you came to heal Stripped of your clothes, you were mocked, you were beaten. Made a king of fools, a crown of sorrow driven deep into your brow. Yet you made no sound. What you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is, you love me as I am. And uh, as this song was playing, I'm going to finish reading it here in a second, but <clears throat> as the song was playing, I was just listening to this and it was almost singing it as someone who's like right beside Jesus, yeah. basically telling him, I see what you went through and I don't understand how you can love me because of what I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it goes into the second verse. It says, they called for Barabbas, a king for a thief, parading your kindness like rags through the streets, draped with the weight of the world on your shoulders as you climbed that hill, a burden far too great for flesh and bone to bear. You stretched out your arms as you welcomed those Roman nails, your body frail, the very hands that shaped the world hung up to bleed, lifted on high, crucified him who knew no sin the Nazarene, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, given to die. What you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is that you love me as I am. Now, by this point, I had realized that God, <laughs> that there was no way that this song had popped up on my YouTube by random and that God was there with me in that in the car and that he he needed me to hear this and this isn't a this wasn't a verse of scripture this was just someone telling the story of Jesus's death yeah. in a very vivid kind of way um and it goes on to say precious redeemer lamb that was slain hope for the hopeless lifter of shame Friend to the sinner, grace to my soul. Death is defeated. Now my sin is gone. And I'm blown away. Yes, I'm blown away. Crushed by the weight of the world that you came to save. You took my place. Your blood as rivers flowing freely to the ground. Yielding your spirit, you let out a holy cry. As you gave your life. And then he says what Jesus said on the cross. Oh, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Oh, my Jesus Christ. And then he says, what you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is that you do it all again. Yeah. And I mean, dude, I was a complete disaster (laughs) in the car. 
I just could not contain myself. And after I listened to that song and I was picturing Jesus' death and what he went through, and then I, it, I knew I, that it, it was all about the, the smoking for me. Yeah. And I knew that God wanted me to stop because I was putting it before everyone, my family, him, um, everyone, work, anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would even go during or at church before the service started to the bathroom. And if my preacher hears this, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to the bathroom and hit my vape in the stall. So, you know, sue me. Don't sue me because I don't have any money. <laughs> um, but you won't have to worry about it anymore because I'm not doing it. <laughs> but anyway, I was just an absolute wreck over this. And I, I didn't know if it was God or if it was me or if it was a mixture of both. But something inside of me, uh, and this is sort of all because of my conversations with Zach. Yeah. Um, something inside of me said, you've got to quit this. This has got to be done, and it's got to be done tonight. Because if you don't do it tonight, you can just forget it. Yeah, you'll never do it. You'll never do it. Um, And so I kind of held my composure a little bit. Uh, until I got off work at 4 a.m. And I probably li- re-listened to this song 17,000 times <laughs> um, up to that point. Um, and uh, at four a- around 4 a.m., I pulled in the driveway. And, I, you know, I told the guys by at work and whatnot, and Zach never knew that this was happening. Um but uh, I, I pulled in the driveway, and I was just an absolute wreck. I was a disaster. Um, and I I pulled in the driveway, and I I got my stuff together, and I just I just sat in the car, and I listened to that song one more time. Um, and I literally was just a wreck because I all I could think about was that if Jesus did all of that and he went through all of this and he was killed and beaten and, and mocked and, and I can't freaking quit vaping for him, for him, (laughs) not even for him, for me, for my family. It's like so minuscule. It's so minuscule. It's ridiculous that I'm It's crazy of the chokehold that it can, but it sucks so bad because it has such a hold on my life. And I did not realize it until that moment and i was literally hitting my steering wheel in my car screaming I mean, at it's myself an addiction. Uh, just saying why how can how can he go through all of this and how can jesus do this but well, this is such a struggle. and this and i can't even quit this if you can't do this you might as well give up yeah and stop just don't even worry about being a christian anymore yeah you know like if you like can't, you can't do, do this, this one small thing that I'm yeah. going to be. Then how could you ever do anything bigger than this? Yeah. And so I, 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 in the car there, I just said, okay, tonight's the night. And so I went inside and I got all my vape stuff together and I sat it on the counter on our island in the middle of our kitchen. And I, uh, I wrote you a note and I said something along the lines of, you know, I love you, and and you know, I don't remember exactly what it said. But Basically, throw this away for me. Yeah, that I want to do better and be better, and God's really calling me to do something, and I'm trying to figure out what it is, and yeah. this is standing in my way of hearing what He's has for me. Yeah. And so I wrote her this note, and then I left it there, and and then I had my vape in my hands, and I I had, I mean, I was just distraught over it and I was down and I got down in the floor of our kitchen in front of the island and I was in tears holding my vape like it was I mean just like it could have shattered into dust I was squeezing it so hard and and I was actively hitting it (laughs) and uh, because I knew that this was my last this is my last chance and I was crying and I was so mad that I was even doing this and 
and then I was down on my knee, hands and knees and I prayed and I just freaking begged and begged God. And I said, God, please take this from me, please. And, and, and there's very few times in my life where I have begged for anything and being there in that moment and, and doing that. That's how I knew that it was real because of how much it sucked. Yeah. It's not gonna <laughs> it's not it wasn't something, meant to be easy. It's not something that I wanted to do. A lot of times in the church world that we live in, a lot of the things that people see as holy and, and devout are things that feel good to do. Yeah. You know, being generous, going down to the altar and praying and, and it wasn't that kind of thing. It yeah. was me it, it felt like mm-hmm. I was cutting my arm off. <laughs> In the kitchen floor. Yeah. And it freaking sucks. And it still sucks. Yeah. And so I sat all my vape juice and my vape up there and I finished praying and I told God, like, dude, this is, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And, uh, this sounds really crappy to say, but, and I didn't say this in the prayer, but as I'm thinking about it now, I've been with my vape longer than I've been with anybody. Yeah. I've been with my, I've been with that smoking You've longer. You've been with nicotine. I've been with it longer than I've been with anybody. Yeah. It's been the closest thing to me. Yeah. Um, And I had to, I had to give it up in one night that I didn't foresee coming because I could have like. Waited. <laughs> waited. <laughs> and God was like, no, dude, you, it's got to go now. If it doesn't go now, it doesn't go. Yeah. And so anyway. I uh, I left it on the counter and I took one last hit and I sat it down and I went into the bedroom and I put my earplugs in and I went to sleep. Yeah. And then when I woke up the next day, it wasn't there and I still had to go to work that night and it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's just no way around it and it still sucks really bad. It's it's gonna get better though. It's going to get better, but I'm, what, four days in now, right About now? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. And uh, it's just... I feel like the first, like, ten days are like... Yeah. So hell. if there is anyone out there who has quit smoking, vaping, or whatever, and you did Especially it Especially just cold turkey. Cold turkey, if you've effectively did it, let me know how you did oh, it. Oh, man, my mom quit cold yeah. turkey. yeah. But I need somebody like me. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I need somebody like me. Yeah. Well, I, th- I feel like because you're doing this and because you're putting this out there and like letting people know that this is something that you've really struggled with. Now I'm really screwed. <laughs> I, th- I think that you're going to find and come in contact with way more people that have and are struggling just as bad as you. Yeah. And, an- and another another aspect of it is that uh, recently someone reached out to us from the church and was asking if we wanted to get involved in a certain area in the church. And we haven't really gotten connected yet. And I didn't really know if it was something we wanted to do or not. And subconsciously I felt as if, um, you know, that night when I was, cause I still had not yet made a decision. I had prayed on it, but I just didn't feel like I heard anything. Yeah. Um, and I just felt like that night that, God was saying, like, if you can get past this, if you can give this up, then I'm going to give you the key to some other things. You'll unlock a new level. You're going to go to the next level. (laughs) And um, since then, I felt so much more at peace about that um, area. And I do think that it is an area at our, our church that I want to get involved in. Yeah. And I actually spoke to the youth pastor today a little bit. Um, but long story short, I, I didn't have clarity on that until all of this unfolded. Yeah. Well, I mean, and also, I mean, you've already said youth, so I mean, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. But, um, I feel like it's also one of those things, even if this wasn't the main point or the biggest issue with you, like surrendering to do that, um, if you're if you're if you are gonna have a leadership role, it, especially dealing with youth and teenagers, how can you be that example and that role model 
Because, I mean, with, especially with teenagers right now, like, vaping is a huge thing. It's in schools, like, you know. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's horrible because it is, it becomes such an addiction. And it's kind of like, how can I, how can you be helping these if, and how can you tell them not to do something with, as soon as you say amen and you walk outside, you're taking yeah, 17 gotta, gotta, hits hang on, off hang on, of yours. Hang on, hang on, guys. I got to go hit my vape real <laughs> In quick. In the bathroom real quick. <laughs> like, you know, like, I think God has a way of moving things around in your life or bringing things to, uh, like, a head. Yeah. Where it's like, well, if this is something that you want to do, and I do want this for you and for your life, you've got to clean some things up and get your act together. Otherwise, you're not going to be allowed to do that. Yeah. And it's just, it's been a whole ordeal that I didn't really want or see coming. It just kind of came out of. It just kind of came out of nowhere. And um, here we are. And I'm four days in from not vaping, and it freaking sucks. (laughs) I know that you've been struggling, but I... I do feel like you've handled it fairly well yeah, so far. I guess. The first like <laughs> I guess. two days you were very irritable. Yeah. And like I mean, I just hate it for you. Like I hate that you're basically going through withdrawals. Yeah. And then that next day you sent me some text message about I something. I know. And I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> Dude, I, I was, was a, just I, I was, was a loose cannon. I right? was mad and I was like I, I was mean, just waiting. I mean, you're my person. To fire it out? You're my person that I rant to. So immediately I was like, Oh, let me text Kendall. And then I was like, <laughs> as soon as I sent it, I said, Oh my gosh, he's gonna like pop off right now. <laughs> and you were like I will drive home right now. And I was like, no, 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 it's okay. You were like, today is not the day. I'm not the one, not today. And I felt so bad. I was like, gosh, I should have just kept that to myself. <laughs> I waited until like day 16 to say yeah, something. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, we, uh, it's been an interesting time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm happy. I'm happier. I'm, I'm all, I'm happier and more depressed at the you same time. You know what is so funny to me, though? What? Is. <laughs> <laughs> you, like that first day or two not the first day because you were at work but the second day um you were off and i had to work or i was gone or something and you had joe and you had texted me and was like i hate that i'm this person right now that i have such a shoot a such a short fuse with her yeah. and you were like i feel myself getting angry and agitated and like Oh, like, I mean, she's a toddler. They're annoying. Yeah. Like, that's just, it is what it is. And, um, I, I hated that for you, but I also almost found it comical in a way <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, you had your escape. You yeah, had yeah. your something that that's like how I kept that brought you down or like chilled you out yeah. for a second. Like if you're aggravated, just like take a hit. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you, and then, but the funny thing is that, Everybody's always like, you don't, Haley, you don't have patience. You don't have patience. And I'm like, no, I have patience. I don't have a lot of them, but I also, I don't have smoke breaks. <laughs> like everybody else, like it, it's like all these people that would say that to me, they all had cigarettes or they vaped or they dipped or they, they had were, some or form they drank. Of something, some <laughs> escape. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't have that. Yeah. So yeah, my, Fuse is naturally I'm a normal a human being. Yeah. And I'm just like, God, I'm so glad yeah. that somebody else finally has a short fuse <laughs> and doesn't have a little hit to yeah. cool them back down. <laughs> That's crazy. And it's true. I mean, and I, I feel, I feel different. Um, my mouth feels clean, <laughs> cleaner. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's like a, 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 a film has been removed that was in, uh, that food tastes better. <laughs> yeah, which is so crazy to me because you're such a foodie. Anyways. I know, so I, know. I can't even imagine how just like, in dramatic four days you're I've be. noticed some differences, and it's a it's a good thing. And then we get to today at church. So one is I've quit vaping, and we've been I've been struggling on on getting confirmation on serving in church. Yeah. And then we get to church today, find out the pastor Trent he's not there today. He's preaching revival somewhere. Find out Vince, my friend Vince, is preaching. Um, he teaches a Sunday school class. So we well, he go, also comes into Sunday school with a survey of find out what your spiritual gift is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said, I, okay, God, I got you. That was a funny one. 
But he get, he does the 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 Sunday school lesson was on spiritual gifts and how you can use your gifts you in the church and, and how you can do different things. If God gives you the ability to to do this, he may may also give you a passion for this and this. And you can also use your gift in your secular job. Yeah. <laughs> And all the whole time, I was like, okay, all right. I kept nudging you like, you should say All right, yeah. Like, it was I such wa- a... No, seriously, I really wanted to, but I just, I don't know, I was nervous. I, yeah. I really was. It was such an open discussion, It's so much too. easier for me to talk here yeah. than it is Well, there's there. nobody looking at you. Yeah, that's a true story. And Vince isn't standing in front that's of you. That's true. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry, Vince. Um, Call but, him out next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Uh, so then we go into then, church. Then we go into church, and re- refresh me on what happened before I leaned oh. over and I told you I want to leave. <laughs> uh, um, he got to talking about um. It was for, we were in First, First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter sixteen, six, 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 six verses nineteen and twenty, something like that. Yeah. Um, which is the uh, um, I hate when they oh do my this. Gosh. <laughs> Let me hold your phone. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. We got it. So anyway, uh, Vince is preaching, and I mean, he just starts nailing, and I felt like everyone nailing you to a cross. I felt boy. like everyone <laughs> in the auditorium was gone, and it was just me, and he was sitting up there with his little spiritual BB gun, and he was just pop, 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 pop. He was shooting me uh, Okay, so it says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which <laughs> ye have of God, and ye are not Hey, God, own. just quit smoking, quit ruining my body, and God's like, see? And Vince comes up there and says, Hey, guys, your body is a temple. This is what the <laughs> Lord has said. Don't ruin it. Yeah. And then it was like, um, and I'm like the okay. three... Okay. Like his three points were purification. Yeah. Like if you can purify, like this, you have to clean house basically. Jesus yeah. came in flipping tables, flipping tables, <laughs> and cleaning the temple up. And if you can clean yourself up and purify and said, yourself, then you'll experience His presence. Yeah. And then when you can experience His presence, then you can praise. And it was just and like I a said, full circle moment. What are the odds that this man really walks up in here by chance talking and about starts life talking like about tr- cleaning up your body and cleaning up God's temple because it doesn't belong to you? And you can't experience his presence, his if, presence you got wounds. if you got wounds. <laughs> And I mean, dude was just slamming me. And, and, and I, you you leaned over to me and said, <laughs> "I want to get out of here." <laughs> and I looked at Dakota, and he said, "He's on the inside. I'm not letting him out." <laughs> I just oh, felt like that was man. such a it was such a good moment. It was you know? something. <laughs> it was good for me. Vince was really killing me there. But uh, that, no, just, it, that just also it just goes to show you that Vince is doing what he's supposed yeah, to Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It really was an awesome, awesome message, and I needed to hear it. And I just, I don't know, man. God. It's almost like you needed to hear it, but it sucked because then that like confirmed. God even was also more. like, see what you did Told the other you. day it would have really sucked if you didn't do it and got in here and heard this today. Yeah, because then I feel like you'd have been on the altar all distraught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think it's funny because all of this originally, all of it trails back to just some conversations that I had with my buddy Zach. Yeah, he kind not he didn't plant the the seed per se, but he almost I mean, like kinda. stirred the pot a yeah. little bit. I mean, he he I would say that he planted the seed of change. Yeah, and, which is good. And he doesn't even know any of this. I mean, mm-hmm. he I did talk to him a, a couple of days ago, and I, I thanked him, yeah. and I told him, I said, "Hey, look, I got some. I, I've now seen some stuff that I need to get changed in my life." Yeah. And I know and it's that, almost like you have to apologize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like how you're, and, and you're uh, supposed to be, you know, a superior. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it's like, how can I be this person and yeah, lead and, you if like yeah. my life's not in order? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so anyway, long story short, everything has just been swirling in a, yeah. they've all been intertwined. Everything has just happened so perfectly and together. And then all of the, the cherry on top was when I heard, 
when I heard that song the other night and it just, God said, this is it. The time is now and we're going to get it done. Yeah. And then it's like, even the songs that they sang this morning, talking about like the blood. <laughs> yeah, I know. But <laughs> both of the songs. The Lord was just really. Blood of Jesus has in me. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, come on guys. And then it's like, oh, what a sacrifice. What about, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what happened to the goodness of God or something? Can we get what? Not, you know? not today. Not we got today. To, we got to know about the blood. Today. Guys, Kendall's here this week. We got to <laughs> sing about Jesus's death of the blood. Get more blood. We need more blood this week, please. <laughs> I feel like that's what Vince said before he went on stage. You know, like, what's the Ken- plan today, Kendall, guys? Kendall's are, out there. We got to nail him. <laughs> what, are, what are the songs today? No, scratch those. Scratch those. I got some for us. <laughs> I hope he listens to this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. Uh, but it was a really great day. And uh, it's been a great week. It's, it's been a really crappy week because it, I'm going you're, through you're withdrawals. You're dealing with the physical. I'm dealing with the physical. Physically, it's been a crappy week. But yeah. like mentally and spiritually, mentally I think and it's spiritually, been a good week. Mentally and spiritually, it's been a great week. Yeah. And uh, I'm happier. And I just wanted to, I felt like this week, instead of, you know, come doing our normal thing. I just wanted to share what's been going on in my life and uh almost like um, a little bit of testimony. Yeah, absolutely. And uh so thank you to first, thank you to Zach. I appreciate you, bud. You did a bunch of stuff that you didn't know you did. And uh it's helped me a lot. Yeah. And, and I then, appreciate you. And then thank you to Caleb because Thank you to Caleb for reaching out to me and asking if I wanted to be a part of the church because you can be in the church and not a part of the church very often yeah, and very easily. And so God used that. And to I feel like when that, when he first asked you about that, that was kind of like the little, yeah. that was another little scene. It was another little scene. It's like this little yeah. garden that's been growing. <laughs> and, and thank you, Vince. God has used you as well. Um, today and through some other things, just, you know, getting to know you guys, you and Marley and, uh, uh, through y'all's podcast and whatnot. So thank you for doing what you need to be doing and, uh, being a good influence. Also their, their second episode comes out. Yeah. Their second episode. So by the time you hear this, it will already be out. It will already have been out. So if you haven't heard it, then go, go check it out. It's what the boss table. The boss table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's that's it. I guys, I I I'm done smoking and if you see me in public for some reason and if I'm smoking something, you have my permission. Y'all better call walk, me. <laughs> first call Haley and then walk up to me and punch me in the mouth. And take it from him. But don't do that while I'm at work cuz then I'll have to yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> don't assault um, anybody. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't do don't assault anybody. We don't promote violence on here. Um but yeah, so that's that's this week, and I'm working through it, and I'm trying to read my Bible more. And we even went to Walmart tonight because our room is dark and the light switch is a long ways away. <laughs> and we bought two lamps <laughs> so that one can lay awake and read, and the other can. Go I don't to sleep. know that one lamp. They're just bright. They're bright. <laughs> yeah, really they're bright. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see. see. But anyway, um, do you have anything else before we wrap it up? I don't think so. Hopefully next week we'll be able to give them a, a update on how yeah. you're doing physically. Yeah. I hope so too, because yeah, I hope so. We will for sure. But uh, anyway, yeah, our dog is our dog going is insane. screaming outside. So <laughs> anyway, look, we love you guys, and to everyone that helped me, that helped, that God used to help make this happen. Thank you, and. To everyone who hasn't heard that song, I'm not getting sponsored by them, but you need to go listen to this song. Yeah. Uh, it's Easter season. It's called Blown Away by Hillsong United, and you just need to listen to it and crank it up. Yeah. And also, if you're not any of those people, but you're struggling with something, yeah, or maybe you just came through it, like maybe you just recently gave up something and you're over that yeah huh what was it we want to what know. was it and how, and hard how was bad it? was it how bad was and it? Yeah. i mean and it doesn't just have to be nicotine yeah I mean, it could there's be all anything. kinds there's of all drugs. kinds of stuff and but i mean we would love to hear testimonies from other people and let yeah. us know if you mind or don't mind if we like yeah. share your story yeah that'd be great that'd be awesome i'd love to do that yeah 
All right. Well, everybody, we love you. And thank you for tuning in for episode 12. We will see you next week on episode number 13 of the Totally Worth It podcast. Yeah, let's go to bed. Let's go to bed. (laughs) Bye.